Okay, two more awards. Up next to present the award for the promotion of science in a narrative feature film is Glenn Plummer. You have seen Glenn in such movies as South Central, Salt and Sea, Speed, and on TV shows like Sons of Anarchy and lots of other productions that begin with the letter S. <laughs> he has recently begun writing and producing and directing in original films including Callista House and Teeth and Blood. Glenn can be seen later this year in Gifted, an upcoming feature movie starring Chris Evans. Please welcome to the stage, Glenn Plummer. Okay, y'all keep the, can we get this turned on? Okay, this is good. Y'all keep the energy up and give it up for Jim Underdown. Um, I just have to get this out of my system right fast. Y'all gotta bear with me because you probably heard this before, but I, I have to do this. Under, down, under, down, under, down. It's kind of hard to say that over and over again without sounding like George Carlin, right? <laughs> under, down, <laughs> under, down. Okay, let me get my jacket off because y'all got me for about, uh, I don't know what I say I was going to do. Two hours, hour, hour and a half. Yeah, y'all got me for about an hour and a half. I'm going to be up here. We're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff. I got a lot of things on my mind, but you know, we're going to get over this and we're going to get through it. Um, but honestly, no, that's not true because they didn't pay me and I'm not getting paid. Although Jim Newman did buy me a pair of shoes today for $39.99, so y'all really probably had me for about a minute and a half. A minute and a half. And I'm going to stand back behind this podium and get this done. Okay. Um, skepticism. Skeptical. You know, I first um, became a skeptic when I was uh, probably about eight years old. Here, let me get rid of this. Um, uh, I was first introduced to skepticism when I was about eight years old. My brother and I, we used to play with water guns. And, you know, I, I always wondered why he just, he, he would beat me every time, because I had a water gun, but he used that, um, that red bag, you know, that hung in the shower. It had the long hose on it with the, you know, that bag. Yeah, he used that. And I was wondering why he beat me all the time. I'm like, man, but that's, that's not a water gun, right? So I, I was kind of skeptical about the water gun. And I realized that it wasn't a water gun because it tastes different. It didn't taste like water. It tastes a little bit like vinegar. I don't know. Am I the only one? Nobody else played with that water gun. OK. OK. Nobody else. All right, I guess I'm the only one. Um, but I'm here to present an award for, excuse me, as you can see, I was not prepared for this. Um, ah, here we go. But before I do this, I also would like to thank Spencer Marks for inviting me tonight. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, he took me to Skeptical. <laughs> Funny story. We uh, checked into the hotel, and the concierge recognized me. And he was like, oh, I'm going to give you guys an upgrade. And when we got to the room, there was one king-size bed. I was like, Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> This, is, this was not what I wanted to have happen here, man. Can, can we do something about this? So we had to go back down and talk to him. Um, but tonight, I'm here to present the award for promotions of science and reason in a narrative film. The Iggy Tonight goes to the story of a man who had to science the shit out of this, The Martian. In it, Matt Damon, stranded on Mars, has to figure out a way to survive while his counterparts on Earth explore multiple avenues of physics and technology to try and figure out how to retrieve him. The film celebrates science and presents scientists as real human beings. This. Every human being has a basic instinct to help each other out. If a hiker gets lost in the mountains, people coordinate a search. If an earthquake levels the city, people all over the world send emergency supplies. This instinct is found in every culture. 
without exception. At around 4.30 a.m., our satellites detected a storm approaching the Ares-3 mission site on Mars. The storm had escalated to severe, and we had no choice but to abort the mission. But during the evacuation, astronaut Mark Watney was killed. I'm entering this log for the record. This is Mark Watney. And I'm still alive. Obviously. I have no way to contact NASA or my crewmates. But even if I could, it would take four years for another manned mission to reach me. And I'm in a hab designed to last 31 days. So, in the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Okay, let's do the math. I gotta figure out how to grow four years worth of food here on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can't figure out a way to make contact with NASA, none of this matters anyway. Houston, be advised. We've got a video message. It's directed to the whole crew. Play it. Mein Gott. <laughs> Mark Watney's still alive. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. We left him behind. Let's go get our boy. This is something NASA rejected. So we're talking mutiny. And if we mess up the supply rendezvous, we die. If we mess up the Earth gravity assist, we die. It's space. It doesn't cooperate. I guarantee you that at some point, everything's going to go south on you. And you're going to say, this is it. This is how I end. Is it possible that he's still alive? Nice. And here to accept the award are Ross and Carrie themselves. No, wait a minute, wrong script. I'm sorry, <laughs> let me get back to what I was doing. Sorry about that. Um, the cast and crew of The Martian had been nominated for several awards, including multiple Oscars, Golden Globes, BAFTA, and AFI, and EMV, no, awards. So perhaps our letter got buried under dough. Not fortunately for the author of the novel on which The Martian is based, is a self-described fan of the IIG, and he took time to send us this video acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Ware. Hello, good people of IIG. Thank you so much for this award. I really appreciate it. I, I'm sorry that I couldn't be there to accept the award in person, but uh, at the time that the award ceremony is going on, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. at another event. So I'm, uh, I have to send you this pathetic little collection of bits and bytes to uh, offer my gratitude. Um, I will say that uh, someday when I get my eventual superpowers, because I like rolling around in radiation, I will come to you guys and collect the prize for demonstrating paranormal activities. In fact, I wonder what IIG would be like in a, like a comic book universe. They'd be like, well, you know what? <laughs> there are a lot of people with paranormal abilities. We give up. We give up. We just, just screw this. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I've always been a big fan of your work. Uh, I, too, am a skeptic on everything until it's proven. So uh, I'm, I'm very honored to receive this award, especially uh, to receive it from uh, an organization like you. Thank you very much. And that's my time. They've turned on the light. I got to go. You guys have a good night. Glenn Plummer, everyone. Glenn Plummer. He's mocking my name, and his name is Plummer. Funny thing, that's just his actor name. His real name is, believe it or not, Mike Diamond. <laughs> Thank you, I wrote that myself backstage. 
Uh, no, but Glenn's new film, uh, Callista House, and Gifted are opening this year, and uh, be on the lookout for The Egg, which is coming out, another feature film uh, based on an Andy Weir novel. So uh, check that out, watch for Glenn. Glad to have him here.